Hello everyone, I am Tarun from Coimbatore Institute of Technology. I am currently pursuing my third year bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Today I am here to share a topic on ultrasonic machining. Hope everyone's doing good during this pandemic situation. Let's start. So, what is machining? Example, take a A4 sheet paper and you want a round, a round piece of paper. What do you do? You either cut it with scissor or a blade. The same can be applied to a metal also. So, any workpiece requires some of its original material to be removed to become a finished product. See? The A4 sheet is the work piece and the round piece of paper is the finished product. It can be related. With metals, material can be removed by conventional operations like drilling, turning, milling in the lathe and unconventional operations such as electrochemical machining, laser beam machining, or ultrasonic machining, etc. The process by which this material can be removed by these operations, drilling, turning, etc., are called machine. So, what is ultrasonic machine? We all know what an ultrasound is. Uh, it's the frequency range above, above which or which cannot be heard by humans. Humans can only hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 20, hertz or 20 kilohertz. So, ultrasonic machining is one of the unconventional machining process. It uses ultrasonic vibration to remove material at surface level. Next, we'll see what are the parts required in ultrasonic machining or required for ultrasonic machining. So, an AC power supply, high frequency generator, a transducer, ultrasonic amplitude transformer or it's simply known as horn, tool holder, tool, abrasive slurry, pump and a nozzle. Next we will see the diagram of the ultrasonic machining process. So this is the AC supply. This will be 50 Hertz in India or 60 Hertz in other foreign countries. This is the high frequency generator. This is the transducer. It can be electromechanical transducer or a piezoelectric transducer. This is the ultrasonic amplitude transformer or we already saw it as horn. This is the tool holder and the pattern is called the tool. Here is the abrasive slurry. Here is the pump. Here is the nozzle. Next we will see the work of each of the parts. So first is the working of the high frequency generator. What this does is, it takes the 50 hertz or 60 hertz input from the three phase power supply and it converts it to high frequency that is above the above 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. Usually this ultrasonic machining is done in the range of 20 kilohertz to 40 kilohertz or 20,000 to 40,000 hertz anyway. Next is the transducer. We already saw it, it can be electromechanical or it can be piezoelectric. 
what this does is this takes the output from the high frequency generator and it transmit into vibration the input is of the electric signals electric impulse and it changes into vibration kinetic Next we see the working of the ultrasonic amplitude transformer or we cited saw it as horn. What this what this does is it takes the output from the transducer. The movement which the transducer does is very low. That is around the range of 0 0.025 millimeter. It is very hard to see. Unfortunately, that output from the transducer is it enough for machining, for effective machining. That's where the horn comes in. This amplitude, this amplitude's the output from the transducer. Also, that output is focused onto the tool for effective machine. Now we will see the working of the tool holder and the tool. The function of the tool holder is to hold the tool firmly in place, obviously. The function of the tool is to imprint the pattern into the workpiece for machining that area. The pattern on the tool is imprinted into the workpiece to get the desired result. Now see, now we will see the working of abrasive slurry. The vibrations from the horn alone cannot remove the material from workpiece. Ab abrasive slurry is supplied at machining area by a pump. This slurry consists, consists of abrasive particles like silicon carbide, boron carbide, or even diamond, for example. Those, those particles are mixed with water, on, water or oil. This is supplied at machining area constantly by the nozzle. So when the tool vibrates, the particles impinge, that is imprint on the workpiece surface and due to abrasion, the materials removed at the microscopic level. Now I will show you the diagram as well as I will explain what is happening there. So here is the three D phase AC supply, 50 Hz in India, 60 Hz in for other foreign countries. This is given to a high frequency generator. The 50, 60 Hz is pumped up to or amplified into about 20 kHz or 20,000 Hz. The output from this frequency generator is given to a transducer. As I said, it's electric, electromechanical or piezoelectric. Piezoelectric is with the help of crystals. So the output from this frequency generator is in form of electric impulse. The transducer turns them, turn, turns them into vibrations. This is connected to a horn, ultrasonic amplitude transformer. The amplitude from the transducer is so low, it's in the form of 0.125 millimeters, which is not enough for machine. This horn, what it does is, it amplifies that 0.125 mm into a more significant um, significant size. Then there's the tool holder, which 
as the tool. Here is the abrasive slurry. It's in a reservoir. This contains the silicon carbide or boron carbide or diamond particles. <coughs> These are all abrasive particles mixed in water or oil. When machining is happening in here, the pump takes the or pumps the abrasive slurry from the reservoir to the machining area here. The nozzle regulates the amount of flow here in the machining area. Now we will see what applications of ultrasonic machine. Drilling round holes of any shape and size. Used to grind brittle materials. We all know what brittle is. The material is hard, but it will be easily broken. Engraving. Engraving is the, you can say the coin, the design on the coin, it's engraved. Broaching hard materials. And it's mainly used in machining of glass and ceramics. Now we'll see the advantages of ultrasonic machine. It can be used for drilling circular as well as non-circular holes in hard materials like carbides, ceramics, etc. The workpiece sensitive to thermal fluctuations can be safely machined by this method. Thermal fluctuations, the temperature change, the metals that are sensitive to the temperature changes that can be machined in this method. Suitable for both conductive and non-conductive materials. Semi-skilled labor can operate the machine. You don't need much knowledge or should I say it can be easily learned this, this type of machine. High accuracy can be achieved. Power consumed is low. Now we'll see the disadvantages of ultrasonic machine. Material removal rate is low. We already saw that the amplitude is very low, the range of 0.125 millimeter. So that's it. Material removal rate is low. Tool life is shorter. Tool life is short because it's always in motion, up-down vibration motion, as well as it's always in contact with the abrasive slurry, abrasive particles in it. So eventually, tool life becomes low. Can only be used for machining small workpiece like coin, etc. Flat surface at bottom of cavity cannot be produced properly because of uneven slurry distribution. And because of that, sharp corners can be produced. Now we'll see what are the types of ultrasonic machine. There are two types in it, rotary ultrasonic machining, chemical assisted ultrasonic machining. So what's a rotary ultrasonic machine? In this type of ultrasonic machine, instead of the abrasive slurry, the tool, the surface of the tool is imprinted with diamonds. We already know diamonds, diamonds are hard material. Again, the tool moves up and down vibration. As the diamond is hard, that workpiece will get machined or should, should we say the material will be removed easily because the diamond is so hard. It can be used to machine very expensive materials like quartz, 
titanium alloys, silicon carbide, etc. This is a new new field ultrasonic machining, rotary ultrasonic machining. It's not been very extensively extensively used. Next, we'll see what is chemical assisted ultrasonic machining. In this type of machining, instead of using the abrasive slurry, we use a highly reactive acidic solution, so like hydrofluoric acid (HF). This is also extensively being researched by scientists to ensure more productivity and quality of the workpiece and finished product. Now we will see an animation or a video on it, ultrasonic machine. So here is the animation. This is the nozzle, the abrasive slurry, the workpiece, the horn, the square and cylindrical or the pattern on the tool, the small particles going from right to left or the abrasive particles, silicon carbide, boron carbide, etc. The pattern on the tool is imprinted on the circular workpiece. So we get a finished product like this. So that's it. Thank you for watching.